All right, let's bring in Samuel Quant, who is heading to the second stage, the in-person mm -hmm. stage of the 2020 Reebok CrossFit Games. Sam, first off, uh, how you doing today? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. Just chilling. It's a nice day, too. So I'm all good. Let's go back to stage one, the virtual stage of the, uh, the CrossFit Games. And, you know, not a lot of people had you making the top five. When you saw the events, what did you think about your chances? Um... After I saw the events, I was definitely a little nervous because, like, uh, there was definitely some workouts that um, were not in my wheelhouse on day one. Um, but I knew that with some of the other events, I could definitely um, make up for it. So uh, definitely a little nervous, but I knew I still had a good shot for sure. What was the competition experience like for you? Um, I mean, this is, you know, obviously there's some familiarity with online stuff in the open and, you know, in-person competition at regionals, at the games. But this being slightly different than all of that. And, you know, you being someone that also, tra you know, trains at home as sometimes as well. What, what was it like for you and how did you kind of adjust to make it as, as I guess, as fitting as possible? Um, honestly, how it worked out with this whole online thing worked out pretty well for me. Um, I pretty much could stick to my own schedule um, for the most part. Usually I train between like, like 10 to one and then, 3.30 to 5.30. So for the most part, I was able to match those pretty much the same. So I got the same amount of sleep as I always do, same training schedules. So that was pretty sweet. Um, but I mean, definitely um, everyone else can relate. It was different not having uh, your other competitors that you're going against. I mean, kind of like the open sort of. Um, you didn't, let's say you're way, way in the lead. Um, at the end, you can't throttle back at all because you don't know if someone's going to be a second or two behind you so you just had to really give her the whole time for the workout so that was definitely different um but for the most part I had a good time I had a good group of people that were with me the whole weekend like most people I train with um had my family my in-laws so it was a cool experience overall um the only annoying part was well it wasn't even bad for me because I was like the last person to go last uh, time zone to go but you do a workout and you have to wait two hours or whatever to know how you did compare to everyone else. That was the only complaint I had, um, which I can't really complain because other people had to wait way longer than me. <laughs> and that, that was going to kind of touch into my follow-up is uh, like, you know, how, what was the process maybe for you for leaderboarding this time, you know, where you trying to figure out what ground you had to make and where you had to go because you didn't get the, the instant feedback being on the competition floor or with the instant feedback being in an in-person competition having a leaderboard to refresh um not too much honestly the leaderboard doesn't make a difference for me too much i mean it's nice to know i will say like let's say at regionals and the same for this um i was going in going into the last workout like in four so i mean it gives you a little more adrenaline to really give her on that last workout kind of a thing so that's nice but for all the other workouts i gave my best effort no matter if i was in second or 12th or whatever it was so um, it didn't make too much of a difference for me. Just maybe the last one a tiny bit. I think people who've been fans of this sport for a little while probably know your name, but don't know a whole lot about you. So let's go back. Mm -hmm. to your, what is your athletic background before you got into the world of CrossFit? Um, I mean, when I was a kid, I did all kinds of different sports. But like in high school, I um, it's kind of weird. I did uh, cross country for two years before I made regionals um, as a senior. But so had a little bit of a running background and people always say that that probably helps you for running, but no, you gain <laughs> like 50 pounds or whatever. And running's pretty hard still. And cross country sucks. Now that I think about it, I mean, it definitely gives you a, like a mental edge for sure. Cause I mean, those races just suck and you're young and it's a, so the race is like a three mile run and you're dumb and you go out really hard every single time you go out hard and you just die and just trying to survive the last two miles. So, those those i swear i think cross country like races hurt worse than a crossfit workout they're they're rough <laughs> how then did you find yourself in the world of crossfit um i mean i was running probably like three years like i mean every day multiple miles a day and running just got was getting kind of boring and um uh, my mom um i don't know if you guys know who mo kelsey is he got like yeah. third in yeah 20 2017 yeah so my mom was like kind of friends with him and she knew he did CrossFit and they kind of thought I would like it. Um, so yeah, I went and went and did a class workout at a gym and kind of stuck ever since. That's a, that's a nice old school name throw. A lot of people. Yeah, I know, right? Maybe, yeah. 
maybe might not remember Moe Kelsey, but, um, you know, uh, with, with that being said, you know, cross, cross country background, do you, you think there's anything else in your upbringing or anything that you think kind of maybe helped mold you as an athlete? We've talked to some athletes, just for reference, we've talked to some athletes that are like, yeah, I always grew up playing like ice hockey with my friends out in the street, or, you know, I was always out, out trying new sports, whether it was skiing, snowboarding, and it kind of builds that athletic base. And I was curious if there's anything like that for you. Um, I would say definitely like, um, not necessarily like sport based, but like uh, worth that work ethic from like my parents, like, like every Saturday, we were working all day for my dad and um, me and my brother kind of helping build his shop and the house that we live in. So definitely like good worth work ethic from him. So I mean, that definitely helps for sure. You're one of seven kids. Is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How yep. does that influence your sort of competitive spirit? Ah, it's definitely nice. Um, it's it's pretty fun for sure. Um, and we were all homeschooled, so we were all pretty much together all day for the most part. So I would definitely was kind of always trying to beat my older brother. And then whenever it got close, uh, we wouldn't play anymore. He wouldn't want to, even though I would want to. Um, <laughs> Typical but, older brother. But now it's getting to the point I have a younger brother. He's 15, and he does CrossFit too. And he, he's starting to beat me on some, like, playing basketball and pig and stuff. So I got I to gotta start practicing everything. He's, he's catching up. He's beat me a couple times, so you better watch out. Now, now you got to switch from pig to horse so you have more mm -hmm. letters to play with. You yeah. Know? Yeah, usually what happens, we play a pig, and let's say he beats me, then I beat him, and then he maybe beats me a couple more times, and then we'll have a last, like, ultimate championship, even if he's uh, ahead. We'll just yeah. say the last one's the ultimate championship, and – Usually, usually I pull it out. <laughs> Smart, good tactic. Yeah. Wipe this slate clean. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Mm -hmm. that's what or, your brother has a right to do. He yeah. set the rules. Yeah, I, you know, I can make it whatever I want, right? <laughs> <laughs> you uh, skipped your high school graduation so you could compete in regionals, and I think that was your your first time that you'd made it to regionals. Yep. Yep. Why did you make that decision? Uh, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't that big of a deal because you're homeschooled. I, I I mean, it was like at a co op kind of thing, so it was. A little bit of a celebration, but uh, it was a no-brainer going to go into regionals instead of um, graduation. That's an easy choice for sure. <laughs> and so, you know, you got to go to regionals as a senior in high school. You know, a young athlete out onto the floor mm -hmm. with a bunch of other like grown men. And what was the point when you were able to realize that, hey, like I can do this? Like I not only do I belong here, but like I think I can make that next jump to the games and be one of these athletes. I mean, it was definitely like, um, I would even say like the first time I was at regionals, I'm 10 years younger than a lot of those guys and I'm beating them or st sticking with them. And I knew I wasn't like in my prime or anything. So I knew if I just kept at it, that I'd get better than those guys. And I mean, here I am still working on it. And I mean, I'm not the youngest in the field, but I'm still one of the younger ones for the most part and getting up there. What was it like to get that valuable of experience at that young an age? It was, it was honestly pretty nice because, I mean, going into it, it was a lot of pressure off you because you're so young and you're like a kid compared to everyone else. So if you, I mean, I didn't want to do bad, but let's say you do bad, it's not that big a deal kind of a thing, if that makes sense. So it was nice to learn that experience with not having so much pressure on you. What were the biggest lessons that you walked away that, with from that first regionals experience? Consistency kind of a thing. I, I didn't. I mean, there's been so many like little tiny things that I can't even like um, tell you that I've learned kind of kind of a thing. I mean, over the years, you accumulate so much knowledge for how to train and compete and everything and not having so much stress kind of thing at a competition. So you learn a lot of different things. So I can't really tell you exactly what I learned, but I'm sure every competition I learned some kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, a couple of years later, you get to go to the CrossFit Games. Um, you're, I believe you're the youngest man in the field in 2016. Mm -hmm. And yep. you could not only do you get to show up and perform well, but you get to win an event. Uh, you win double DT, um, one of the final, you know, <laughs> under the lights type workouts yeah. in, in the tennis stadium. What was that experience like? And I mean, how did, how did that compare to what you would imagine in terms of like getting to be on that stage and do that well? Uh, it was, that was pretty sweet for sure. Um, I mean, so I was in the, the third heat. So I still had like, I won my heat, which was super cool. And then we went back and watched the, the top heat go. And then after I won, I mean, a couple of my competitors um, gave me high fives and stuff. I didn't really know, like, how big of a deal what it was. But 
I mean, then going out for my parents, I was getting like stopped left and right for autographs. So that was, that was pretty sweet for sure. Um, and then, I mean, it's always been a, a thing people bring up double DT. So it's definitely been a pretty cool, cool moment in my CrossFit career for sure. Uh, fast forwarding now to the, the virtual competition part one, when, when was the point when you realized, you know what, I can, I can do this. I can find myself inside the top five. Um, honestly, after uh, day one, I knew, like I said, I knew day one, one wouldn't be good for me. And then when I finished day one in 12th, um, which was better than I thought it would. So I kind of knew that uh, I gave, gave her on the next couple workouts. I definitely had a shot. I mean, but lurking over my head was that handstand hold, which when I saw that, I'm like, Oh no, that's going to be my, my worst event of the weekend. Cause I was like, I saw on like some Instagram stories, people holding it for two minutes and I'm like, Oh crap. <laughs> I've like held it for maybe like 30 seconds or something. Just like, I mean, my coach had me accumulate handstand holds for time for stuff like that, but not like not in a four by four box. And I'm like moving all over the place. So that was definitely nerve wracking that one. And I mean, I pulled out a good, good, great score on that one. So I was super stoked. Um, and I, I want to backtrack just a little bit because, you know, your journey to here, you hit a little bit of a speed bump in 2018. Mm -hmm. yep. You qualify for your first CrossFit Games, qualify for your second. And I've talked about this a little bit. I think one of the reasons why you've continually flown under the radar again is you had that knee injury that took you out of the mm -hmm. limelight for the year that I think really stands out in a lot of people's minds in 2018. What yeah. was it like having at a young age after, you know, some success, having to deal with that injury, work through it. And what were some things that you felt like you were able to improve on on the back end? Yeah. So on, there's like kind of a whole story that went into like that um, injury. Um, so go, going into the 2017 regionals, uh, like three weeks before, um, I hurt my back pretty bad. I didn't know how bad it was. Um, but I mean, it's three weeks before regionals, so I was still training pretty hard. And I mean, made through made it through regionals, got second, so qualified for the games. And then I kept, I mean, I kept training. Um, and then I was the one side of my back, so I started compensating with squats and everything. And then ended up hurting my knee. Uh, I would say like a month before the games. Um, so I would go into the games, which I didn't know. I had a, um, a hairline fracture in my back. And then a torn meniscus. So that was that whole season was just crap after yeah. the whole the whole games was rough. So I mean got through that. And then my back was I took like two weeks off after the games. My back was was pretty good. I mean, right now it's good. It's totally fine. Um but then my knee was still bugging me, so I ended up I would say after the games, like three months later, I got an MRI on my knee and showed that I had a torn meniscus. So I that was, it was pretty close to the open. So I still did the open planning on doing the 2018 season, um, qualified for regionals and then trying to transfer regionals. I just had had enough and I ended up getting surgery. So, I mean, missed that whole year. And then it took a while to recover from that knee surgery. And I think I had like a solid six months of good training even before the 2019 game. So it's kind of like, it's been a whole, whole journey to get to where I am again, kind of a thing. So, I mean, like I said, learned a ton of stuff from that train training smarter. I mean, how your body compensates for, for stuff and you can hurt other things kind of a thing. So, I mean, you learn your lesson the hard way, but I mean, all the great athletes have some kind of story like that. You touched on it there just a second, but I was, as you were answering that question, I was thinking, you know, sometimes you take a couple steps back and you can wind up taking a bunch of steps forward as a result. Yep. So yep. Uh, how did that help you sort of refocus and become a better athlete? Um, I would say I have more grit kind of come from it. I don't really understand the question all the way, but um, definitely. How did, how, did go, how did going through the injury, how did that maybe yeah. help you in the long run? Um, definitely kind of like taking a step back and um, really realizing why I was doing the sport kind of a thing. Um, and it made me question if I still wanted to keep doing it. Cause I mean, it was pretty rough recovering from the surgery. I mean, a lot rougher than I thought it would be. So um, you kind of get your passion back a little bit when you really, you make it again and you do well kind of a thing, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, you said you only had six months, but I mean, you had a career best finish at the games, even under yep. those circumstances. Yep. Uh, what yep. does that do? What does that do for you? I mean, and let's be fair injury into a wacky 2019, into yeah. even wackier 2020. Yep. What does that do for your confidence and that passion now? Anything I mean, I, yeah, definitely like going into the, like I, like you said, I placed, you said I placed my career best, 13th of the games 
and I only trained for like six months. So I knew the 2020 season could be pretty good with a full, full year of good training. And people didn't really know what I had to go through. Kind of like I didn't have a full year of training for the 2019 game. So definitely knew I had a shot to get in the top five. And that's why, I mean, I knew I'd be overlooked and that's, I mean, that's the reason I was overlooked kind of a thing. So, I mean, I'm not surprised to make the top five, but I mean, I definitely surprised some other people. And so you mentioned, you mentioned it kind of makes you reevaluate your passion and your drive yep. for the sport. And um, I'm kind of curious now because I know some major life things have happened in during <laughs> your career. Um, when you think about Sam Quant, the 18 year old regional athlete, the 20 year old games athlete, and, and now, you know, mid twenties, top five at the games, what would you say is the, the biggest change in the passion and what drives you to be your best in the sport now? Um, I mean, definitely um, uh, for family, like you got to make sure you're making money for them kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. So that's, I mean, that's switched a little bit. So I mean, whether it's with sponsors or not, but definitely got to do what you got to do to support your family. I mean, my wife works too. So I mean, definitely like 2018, I wasn't making enough money to, to support a family or anything. So, I mean, that's definitely a big drive right now to make money. I mean, that's not the, the best thing to say, but I mean, it's definitely one of the big parts right now. It, I'm, there's nothing, it's funny, people will say that, but I think it's an honest answer and an altruistic thing to want to support your family, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. What's it like training now as a new dad? <laughs> uh, it's, it's been, for the most part, it hasn't changed too much. Mm -hmm. um, so the part that would affect my kind of training would be like sleep and stuff. And he sleeps really well. And um, if when he does wake up at night, my wife's the one taking care of him. So I'm super blessed with that. And then I train out of my uh, parents' shop for the most part. So I bring him along while my wife's working and while I'm training my uh, siblings, usually take care of him. And then when I take care of him, he's usually a good boy for the most part. And if you <laughs> need to take a nap, he'll, he'll take a nap. I'll help him out. So it's, it's, it's been fun for sure. I mean, definitely different. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I got some of that dad strength for that front squat. So he's helping me out for that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a real thing, man. And, and, and now you can, uh, for those pig games, you can bet hours of babysitting. You got a yeah. whole new, like. Dude, you know what I'm the best at now? I, I swear I got better at like sandbag carries. I, yeah. Like, it's no kidding. <laughs> because like, you just sit there in that position for yeah. so long. Uh -huh. Dude, yeah, you're, this is your middle back's just burning from holding him, <laughs> trying to get him to sleep. Yeah, definitely better at um. Uh, sandbag D ball stuff. So go with that. Oh, man. I never even thought about yeah, that. No, it makes you, a yeah. lot of sense. Yeah, it's just you just sit there and you're just uncomfortable and you just have to <laughs> load the front of the yeah, yeah, and you locked. can't move <laughs> or yeah. else he's gonna cry. So, yeah, you know. Exactly. It's uh, yep. how is how is just being a new dad sort of just change your outlook uh, on life in general? Ah, uh, it's definitely it, it's like I don't really know how to explain it, but it's definitely changed a lot of different things. Um, life's definitely more enjoyable with him around um but, i mean definitely a little more stressful for two but i mean all good things for the most part so it's, it's hard for me to explain but mm -hmm. it's it's super awesome it's super fun for sure you can never uh there's no substitute for experience and you clearly have mm -hmm. some you know, going to the games and being as successful as you have especially last year what you're about to face in aromas is going to be unlike anything that we've ever seen at the crossfit game so what lessons can you take from your time competing at the level at which you're competing and then apply now to what's going to happen in aromas here in a, in a couple of weeks. Yeah. We don't know what's, what's going to happen. What are they going to throw at us? I mean, I just got to take everything that I've learned with, I mean, most of the stuff I've learned is recovery wise, um, making sure I'm recovering after events, hydrating, all that kind of stuff. And I mean, try not to get stressed out, that kind of thing. Cause I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be weird with just five dudes and, yeah, no room for air. So I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be, it's going to be sweet for sure. And you actually had some experience in 2016 going to the ranch too. Uh -huh. uh, I, yep. I, it's funny. I, I feel like the ranch is such a, such a, like this weird mystical place and people are like either they love it or they hate it kind of, <laughs> kind of situation is like, yeah. when you think about your time in 2016, is there anything that you're like excited to get another crack at, or maybe even like, you know, get some revenge on? Frick. Uh, yeah. I mean, I know we're probably going to have some kind of pack trail run. So I'm hoping we get that done early in the weekend. So then I don't have to think about it. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to that. Um, I would honestly, there was the, the one event that was wall ball GHD and run. I'd really like to do that one again, just cause I felt like I held back in a couple of parts that I shouldn't have. And I know I could have got a better finish than I did. So hopefully we do something like that. I know he's going to utilize that hill. And so it's going to, 
it's going to be some rough events for sure. <laughs> what does your training look like from now until when you show up in Aromas? Yeah, so, um, I mean, it's pretty much the same training I was doing before um, they announced that it was an in-person competition. So, I mean, I'm biking, I'm swimming, I'm doing all that outdoor stuff that we could do at the games. So, yeah, not – I mean, yeah, like I said, it was, it's pretty much the same training I was doing before they announced it was uh, 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 not in-person competition. What's the goal of training right now? Because it's not like you can build a ton of fitness yeah. in a couple mm -hmm. of weeks. So what do you look to accomplish? Through what I mean, so just sharpening some of the skills, like some, my swimming, um, biking, running up hills, whatever it is. Just so, yeah, like you said, you can't really get fitter, but um, you can uh, sharpen up some skills. And I mean, there's a lot of skill work that comes into it at the, at the games. I mean, definitely like fitness and stuff, but you got to be able to know how to use a bike and all that kind of a stuff, all that kind of stuff. Um, well, one kind of question that I have, it's a little, a little bit different is, so since you've been at the games, it's been part of what we would consider like the Matt Fraser era. So I, I'm always curious what it's like to, especially someone that's rising the ranks and like, and, and you know, still young in your career, what is it like to have someone like Fraser to compete against, to train against, to, to, I don't know, whether it's bulletin board material or, you know, or, or something to aspire to? Uh, it's definitely, it's definitely interesting. I mean, when you hear it, they're like, Oh, you're going for second place. And <laughs> I mean, to a point it's true, but I mean, there's always a chance you never know what could happen. So, I mean, it's definitely weird to have someone that, that dominant in the sport and it's hard to touch him. And so it's some events. So, if you beat him on an event, it's uh, definitely a plus. So, I mean, in 2019, I beat him on a handful, not a handful, like two. So, <laughs> I mean, and I think I beat him in like one or two in this online thing. So, I'm going to gonna beat him a couple more times down there. And that's the goal. I mean, just give her on every workout. And, oh, I mean. Oh. I'm sorry, go ahead. Finish your Oh, I said there's definitely anything can happen down there. I mean, it's, it's definitely not a for sure thing that he's going to win kind of a thing. So. Um, I'm not saying he's for sure getting first or anything like that. So along those lines, why do you think you're the guy who might be able to knock him off? I'm uh, just staying consistent. I don't know, dude. Yeah. We'll see what happens. I, I'm, yeah. It's going to be hard to beat him. Um, I don't really have a good answer for that one. So uh, well, what's that? Uh, what's that ice skating? Maybe I'll have my coach, uh, like Tanya Harding. Is that her there name? You go. There you go. That's, you know. <laughs> Yeah, do that. You never know. <laughs> Jeff Galuli, I'm right in the knee. He he almost did to himself one year when he when he was stretching yeah. his leg and he turned his knee a little too far. You never know. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it could be an accident, right? Yeah. There, <laughs> there is yeah. a basketball hoop right outside the ranch, and go. Dave likes to shoot hoops. So, Ooh, okay, knees. okay. All right, <laughs> all right. Maybe challenge him to a little one-on-one -on -one game and yeah. a little physical on the Take board. Take him out of the knee. There we go. Yeah, yeah. I like that. What would need to happen to you? Uh, well, not to you, but what needs to happen uh, in a row? But you've already guaranteed yourself your best career finish of the games. But yep. what now needs to happen for you to say, you know what, 2020 was a successful year? Uh, getting on the podium now. Um, I mean, there's no reason why I shouldn't be on there looking at the, the five guys that are there. So to be successful now, I mean, I mean, the first part was successful stage one, but this is a whole new thing. I'm going, I'm going there, going for the podium and, I'll be happy if I come out on the podium there. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Yeah. And we really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Uh, yeah. Best of luck Definitely. moving forward. Best of luck with uh, the new addition to the family. I'm, I'm sure that's going to well for you. Hey, you too. And, uh, thank you. Thank you. And we're really looking forward yeah. to watching you throw it out in person, man. Right on. Yeah, it's going to be sweet for sure.